this is Pastor Brown. I believe that Pleasant Hope has some of the most amazing people in the whole wide world. It can be hard though to really get to know each other when we're zooming in and zooming out from week to week. I wanted to bring to you a new series where we can profile some of the members of this church, hear more about their stories and celebrate the ways in which God has gifted them. This is an exciting new series that I pray that you enjoy. It's gonna to help to bring our church closer together and give us all a better sense of why and how God has aligned us for such a time as this. Enjoy these member spotlights, including this one. Hey, Bless and Hope, this is Pastor Brown. So excited to come to you once more with another member of the Pleasant Hope Baptist Church. Today, I'm excited to be talking to Evan Richardson. Evan, how you doing? I'm doing good, Pastor. Thank you. Evan, remind the members of your church family, how old are you again? I'm currently 12 years old. 12 years old, Evan. I'm not seeing you all year, but I'm sure the next time I see you, you're going to be taller than me and looking down on Pastor Brown. You are growing up. Hopefully. A fine young man, 12 years old. What you been doing this year in this pandemic experience? How you been managing? Well, honestly, I've just been trying to socialize as much as possible while also staying safe. And one of the ways I've been doing that is through virtual reality, online virtual reality. It allows you to connect with people from around the world who also own a virtual reality system and talk to them basically through systems. And you can like meet like you can meet with other people from around the world in a virtual environment that lets you talk to each other and be right next to each other like it were to be real life. I've also been trying to come connect with family as much as possible. Over the pandemic years, we've been making up our own rules to play like pandemic versions of common board games like Uno and other things. Like we've just been able to play like card games, board games, and trivia from far distances. And I think it's just really important to stay social during these times. Now, Evan, you are, you are such a technological person. Tell me a little bit more about this virtual reality thing. Is this like PlayStation or Xbox or something? What are you talking about? No, this is, well, what I play on is called the Oculus by Facebook. It's a Facebook made product that basically, it's a, well, almost like a headset that you put on your eyes and it makes you feel like you're in a virtual environment. What it does is basically gives you a 360 view of a room and it tricks your eyes into thinking what you're seeing is real. For example, it can also trick your brain into feeling like you're real by, it also has hand, hand motion tracking, it's built in with hand motion tracking, so it can track your hands as you move along, and when you grab objects in virtual reality, it like, it, it's weird, it's made to make you like feel like you're actually grabbing something. Okay, now, okay, let me, let me ask you this, and I know your brain is such a fantastic um, organ, and so my question is, you go into these virtual reality places and other people can meet you there in these virtual reality rooms? Yes. Um, you can like, you can either meet new friends online or other friends who own virtual reality systems that you know personally. You can meet them through virtual reality. So is there a limit in terms of how many people can be in the virtual reality room at one time? I don't actually know, but I would say that there could be a limit because it the more people online from around the world could cause your um, personal system to act up because it has to kind of like process everybody else moving around. But I, I do think it's nice. And I one of the things I really liked about it is for 4th of July, there was actually host, they were actually hosting an event for all people who own the Oculus by Facebook to meet up in like a room and chat with each other through virtual reality during the 4th of July. So Evan, you are making explosions happen in my brain because it's a big what if. Now, Pastor Brown lives by what ifs. I love pushing the envelope in terms of what's possible. What if we had like a virtual church service where the members of Pleasant Hope could meet together in a virtual reality and do church a different way? You think that we could do something like that? I would love that, but I do think that the um, Oculus is like, 
well, maybe not really an Oculus by Facebook, but some kind of virtual system where we could do that. Because I do think that would work. There are other types of virtual systems, like the, um, the, there's a special type of virtual system that has a lens, so you can put your phone on a lens and have a 360 view of a, an area. So maybe what we can do is get everyone one of those, like, virtual lenses and have, like, our face our Facebook Live church, people could put it on and feel like they're, like, sitting in the pews looking around. They can, like, feel fully immersed in the church by having those virtual systems. Evan, I deputize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to work with me to create the virtual Pleasant Hope Sanctuary. And even if it's just uh, Josiah's crew or Freedom School or a small group, Let's see if we can recreate Pleasant Hope in a virtual world and meet in the sanctuary. I think that would be so fun. I also agree. I think that would be yeah. really, really interactive and really fun. So I, I wouldn't know. I need to follow your leadership here. So if you help us and point the way, I want to give that a try. But in addition to the virtual reality, I mean, just in terms of what you described and spending time with your family and others, it is so cool that y'all have found innovative and new ways to stay together, even if you can't, you know, be together physically. So like Uno or board games, really fun and really important uh, as well. You're, you finished school. Now, earlier this year, school for you changed to a fully virtual experience, right? Online classes and the like. Yeah. Yes, yes. How how did you, how was that experience for you, being online in a class? Now, I'm all about honesty, so if I can be completely honest with you, <laughs> I do not, well, in terms of my school system, the um, Baltimore County Public Schools, I did not think they did, I don't think they did a terrible job at online school, but I don't really think they did a great job either. What I think happened is they had to throw something together in the time they had because no one was ex really expecting this. But now that most like counties in our state are switching to like online learning, I really think that this gives them time that they should be using to set up more like to basically adapt to more online ways of learning instead of trying to open up new businesses. What we need to do first is just focus on what we can do online. Just prepare prepare the, us for the fact that we're probably going to be online for a lot longer. So, Evan, when you were in school before, earlier this year, rather, when the online learning, were you in class all day like normal or no. did they con they condense the day? It was shorter. We only so we only really got to physically see our teachers like how we're communicating now. We only got to see them two days in a week. And then what were you doing the other days? We would work on packets they would assign to us. OK, so you had work days and then you had online learning days. Yes. Okay, so as you said, I mean, it's so you're so astute. Um, the uh, school year that is coming has allowed for the school systems to have more time uh, to pull things together in a tighter way. What are some of the things that you're hoping that they tighten up or figure out to make the online learning experience a better one for you? Maybe all day online interaction because I do feel like the online interaction from our school was really good and it was really helpful and that way you know that kids are participating in classes because one of our main problems um, my past year my sixth grade year was not many students were attending the classes and we had to they had to send letters out to each um, of the students houses saying hey if you don't attend these classes you're going to fail and you're going to be in sixth grade next year so I really feel like all day like online interactive school where you can be working and then have the teacher talking with you and I also feel like the packets they just they weren't really organized so I feel like you, you work on a teacher with one thing right then when your time's up you put that thing away you worry about it next time you worry about it the next day I want I really want to keep it the 8 a b day system and not have like what the hype what the hybrid program was offering like a kids and b kids coming on different days I really feel like we should stick to online for the time being and try to work at a program where there can be A days and B days still within online school. A days and B days, even with online school. Okay. Yes. These are some stellar recommendations. And uh, I hope that the Baltimore County school system 
uh, takes note of what you've said, or maybe they've already kind of moved some things in the direction of what you're saying. Because I really agree with you, Evan, that when it comes to online school, instead of trying to, uh, you said start new businesses and, and other things, um, but as a part of that comment, you were really kind of, for me, alluding to the fact that it's likely that we're going to be in this situation for a while. Um, yes. As bad as all of us want things to change um, quickly, this doesn't feel like something that's going to change quickly. So we might as well kind of adjust a little bit and make the best of the situation. I'm curious to, and we talked a little bit about Pleasant Hope in terms of the virtual possibilities, but I'm also curious in terms of what you would think uh, should or could happen with Pleasant Hope, like the actual church and the people and our ministry, what are some things that the church could do? I mean, similar to school systems, churches have to change too. What do you see as a possibility um, or maybe possibilities with respect to how churches can adjust during this time? How do we stay meaningful and relevant? Well, I love the second word you used, possibilities, because I think there are multiple possibilities. One of the things that I re um, really enjoyed was past Sunday where we were outside, having church outside. I really feel like that that's nice that we can have maybe some people are watching from their homes, watching from Facebook, and some people are watching from the outside. Maybe we could like assign a person who is what the, who is there who can hold up maybe a camera to show to get you like a good view of like what's going on in church. Yeah. Okay. And I also think, which I think was more would more be like a long term goal, and that you you could discuss with Brother Randy a way to provide meals to kids within the Baltimore City School District and Baltimore County because it's come to my attention during the quarantine that many kids get their breakfast, lunch, and dinner from school and now that the quarantine is happening, not like not all kids are being provided with full meals and I think that really needs to change. And because our and because our church has already set up a food system, I think that we can adapt that to work with kids in their school so that they can be provided full meals. That's an awesome idea, uh, Evan. Both of them awesome ideas. And uh, I pray that everybody watching, listen to what Evan is saying. This is some really some really sharp stuff uh, that you're sharing. Um, I'm curious, Evan, um, this is maybe, what, the last month and some change before school starts again. Um, are there, do you have some things on your list that you want to do or some fun you want to have? before classes start again. What are you looking forward to? Well, I have been signed up on a summer program called Varsity Tutors, and what I'm really looking forward to is learning how to code and learning how to work with online things. On a gaming engine called, it's called um, Scratch.edu, I've actually posted some games that I've self-engineered, and I'm really looking forward to working with more programming and stuff like that. But one of the other things that, that I'm looking forward to, I think, would be visiting my family just so I can get more pool time in because I know some cousins have a pool. And I could do some swimming during the quarantine. Some swimming, pool time, coding. So like HTML and, you know, those kind of computer languages, you want to learn those? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Man, that's kind of and really, it's a lifelong skill. Um, because I learned HTML years ago, but, and even so, to this day, so uh, that language is helping me. Knowing how to code is helping me too. Really cool stuff. Um, all right, here, here's some like round robin popcorn style questions for you, Evan. Um, what is one of your favorite shows that you're watching right now? One of my favorite shows that I'm watching right now, and I just started, I guess people call it binging. I've started a series called The Walking Dead. I think it's a really suspenseful series, and I think like every episode kind of like has a cliffhanger, so it keeps you on edge. Wow. The Walking Dead. Okay. All right. Music. What's an artist right now that's in your playlist on repeat over and over again? You want to hear oh, it? Um, I think... Artist and playwright Lynn Man Manuel Miranda. Wow. He was the he was the person who wrote the, the famous play that's currently now on Disney Plus, Hamilton, about the story of the 
um, founding father of the ten dollar bill, Alexander Hamilton. Oh, so you've seen Hamilton? Yes, and he's made a, a mixtape of all of his songs that I really enjoy listening to. Cool. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, are there any people at Pleasant Hope that you've not seen that you want to give a shout out to? Maybe Josiah's crew or any adults. They're all watching right now. Who you want to give some love to today? Nobody give any shout outs. I think yes, it would be to Josiah's crew, all the deacons. Hey guys, all the um, um, what are they called? M m money members, Ministry of Money. Okay, the trustees. Uh -huh. Yeah, trustees, trustees. Man, I have not been to church in a while. See that, man? You're forgetting the names of stuff. The Ministry of Money. But you know what? I, I kind of like your name better. The Ministry of Money. <laughs> oh, That's a good uh, ministry. Maybe like my friends. Well, we, just, we did just see Autumn. My friend CJ, hello. So, hello, everybody. <laughs> now, look. One, before we get out of here, your brain does amazing things. You're thinking about businesses all the time and launching businesses and big ideas to change the world. Are there any businesses um, that have popped up for you, or do you do you already have a business that you want to tell us about? What are you working on? What is your brain doing these days? Well, I did make a funny. I, I kind of threw it aside, but now that you mentioned it, I, it's kind of like popping up again. I I mentioned to my aunt once a funny idea. I was like, hey, wouldn't that be funny if like. Um, a restaurant open specifically designed for like curbside. And I don't know, like, I'd call it like Evans Curbside Eats or something. And it'd just be a re kind of like, do you remember, um, it's, there's this really old restaurant called Sonic and they have like people in roller skates rolling to you. It'd yeah. be kind of like that, but Sonic is now, Sonic just opened up Inside Eating, which was a very great time for that. <laughs> but it would be like Sonic where you just basically sit outside and you, the meals will be cooked inside with gloves, N95 respirators at all times, socially distanced, and they come right to your door, put it, put the food in your trunk, and you can just drive home and enjoy the food. Now, isn't isn't Sonic like that now? I mean, I, I'm thinking about a Sonic in Baltimore County, if I'm remembering right, where you drive up and push the button and do the orders, and they bring it out to you. They yes. Still do it, right. Yes. Well, really, what how Sonic is made is well. I, I actually don't know because every time I've ate, eaten at Sonic, it's always been like in inside like a car. But I think like when I made my idea, it was more like how Domino's and Pizza Hut is, are doing their curbside, where they just put a meal in your trunk. So it kind of be like how you put bags in your trunk after shopping. People would you just pop the trunk. People would put your order in the trunk, and you could just drive home. Awesome. So so. As you're talking about, you're getting me hungry now, Evan. So you call yours what? Evan's curbside. Evan's curbside, like Evan, Evan's curbside meals. Evan's yeah. curbside meals. So when you open up your business, Pastor Brown will be the first one to come and buy some nice vegetarian burgers from you. I know you're gonna have yes. clean burgers or something All like that. All vegan food. All vegan. Are oh, you doing vegan? All yeah. Right. I actually kind of. I just thought of a better name. Hmm? No, you, I'm not vegan, but I, I think I want to become. You, so I'm not the, I'm vegetarian now. That's one of the things, one of the changes that, in fact, you know what? During Lent of this year, I, I said I wasn't going to eat chicken or turkey anymore. And then after Lent, I just stayed with it. And I decided, let me just stay a vegetarian uh, now. So I'm vegetarian and um, it's working out well for me. I'm managing my blood pressure and my health very well. But also, I'm staying physically active. I'm working out. So me, Heber, and Ethan uh, ride our bikes almost every day. We're riding bikes. Maybe three miles to five miles, but we get a good ride in every morning, early in the morning. Are you doing anything to stay physically fit, Evan? Actually, I am. I'm actually also bike riding. I bike ride with my grandfather in Virginia. We um ride up to like fast food places, well, we don't eat there, but we just make them landmarks, like, we will drive up to gas stations, we'll, I just think it's really fun, like, riding bikes, and what I really like about riding bikes is that it gets, gets you comfortable, it prepares you, in a sense, riding bikes prepares you for your future, because if you're riding in the biker lane, and there's cars zooming past you, it gets you comfortable with being on the actual road, that way, when you begin learning how to drive, you're like, well, I mean, I've been on the road before. Cars are always speeding past. Now I feel more comfortable because I was riding in the biker lane, so I feel more comfortable on the road. 
That is very cool. Good tip. And now that I know you ride bikes too, and I think I saw your dad riding bikes as well. Does dad have a bike? Maybe yes. we should have a, a Pleasant Hope yeah. bike riding club. We can all ride together. That could be pretty cool. Speaking of your dad, and certainly want to shout out your dad, Lawrence, and your mom, Carmen. Uh, we hear dad handling business in the background. What is one thing that dad has done well? I mean, this is a chance to shout out your dad, get some brownie points, but to kind of love on your dad and your mom who are parenting and working and doing all this stuff in a pandemic. What's one thing dad is doing well and mom is doing well? Just give them some compliments. What are they doing? Well, yeah, yeah. they're doing well. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. What they've been doing well is, well, there's this new thing around called HelloFresh. And you can order these HelloFresh boxes and they'll deliver, like, healthy meals to your door. My mom has been preparing those meals. And my dad, you know, he's like a cook himself. So he'll just cook up his own meals that I've really been enjoying. Like, for example, no meat chicken, just chicken. Chicken made from all herbs, is, it tastes like chicken. It's really convincing. It tastes like it's straight from Chick-fil-A, but it's no meat included. Mmm, that is awesome. Well, kudos to mom and kudos to dad. Your last word, uh, what tips would you give other young people? You're 12. What other 12, 11, 10-year-olds who will be watching this, what tips would you give them to how to kind of stay cool and, and, and stay um managing this moment well any tips or anything that's working well for you that you would recommend for others what i can say is the situation that we're in is very weird and i know lots of kids in like lots of kids near my age and near my time period can be feeling anxious can be feeling sad because they're not used to a global pandemic they they never expected that something like this would happen to them what I just say is just try to just try to stay safe, interact with friends, but still always socially distance, wear a mask at all times when you go out, and just please stay safe because I know it. I know it's getting boring. I know you want to go outside, but COVID nineteen, we still have so much to learn, and we don't know a lot about it. And what I'd say is just maybe try. Meditation, actually. Just try clearing your mind every once in a while. When the world around is getting too stressful, have a minute for yourself. And I also want to say to all the people who are currently feeling grief after the, after the death of George Floyd and now that we're having an uprising for the black community, I want to say to all my brothers and sisters around there, we're going to get through this. There are people out there who love you. We are fighting for you. Black lives matter forever and always. We are here for you. Stay safe. And just stay safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Thank you, Evan, even for adding the piece about what our people are going through with respect to police brutality and the like. It's just the latest chapter of um, many, unfortunately, that we've experienced. But I've always been inspired by your commitment uh, toward justice for our people. You make no bones about it. You are committed to our community. Um, there's this wonderful picture that I have of you holding up a sign. I think your dad or mom might have taken this picture uh, from this past Sunday. And in the sign, I think it says, no justice, no peace, no racist police. And just seeing your commitment for our people is just really encouraging. I just want to encourage you to keep on keeping on, man. You are, you are one of the leaders that we need. Uh, to make a difference in our community. Yeah. Do you mind if I close out with a word of prayer for us? Sure thing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Gracious God, thank you so much for Evan, and thank you for the gift that he is to his family, to his church family, and our community as well. God, I pray you continue to bless him and to keep him and his family safe and protected. Keep them together and unified, God. And might their relationships grow even stronger during this time. I thank you for the dreams and the visions that you have given to Evan. And I pray that you bring them to pass in our lifetime. 
that we might see his gifts on full display and that your name might be glorified. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Evan. Let's work together on virtual Pleasant Hope Baptist Church. All right. Yeah, let me know what, what, what I need to do, man. We're going to get this virtual church going. All right. All right, man. Take care. Have a great day. All right. Take care, Pastor. All right.